Hi, I'm Samuel. Thanks for joining me today on Smashing Pillars TV. Um, we're going to actually, today I'm going to talk to you about the laying on of hands. I'm going to talk to you about the negative side of it though because I, this actually just kind of dropped on me today to share this and to pray for you. Um, there's a lot of that that goes on in the church today. It is scriptural, but a lot of of it is not scriptural. A lot of it that's being done and the way it's being done is not scriptural. You have to be prayerful, okay? I've had hands laid on me many times to impart, you know, gifts and, and to activate callings and, and all those kind of things. And it's amazing. I have to tell you, it's amazing when God is actually speaking through people and they're laying hands on you. It, it's life changing. And, and, you know, but then the enemy comes in also and he perverts that and he brings in a counterfeit. And he brings people that, you know, you just would never suspect. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. And uh, then I'm going to pray for you so that you can be released from things that um, you received by the laying on of hands that was not from God that has kept you in cycles of sin. Okay. And so let me just open in prayer. Father, I just thank you right now, Lord. I thank you for my brother. I thank you for my sister that is watching this show. Lord, I thank you that your power is available to heal to deliver and to set free, Lord. I thank you that I thank you for your word. I thank you for the blood. I thank you for your spirit. I thank you for sending Jesus, Abba, that you sent Jesus to set us free, Lord, to save us, Lord God, and to bring us into a right relationship, right standing with you, God. God, I thank you for all these things, Lord God. Lord, I pray that you release angels now to move on behalf of my brother and my sister. Let your presence fill their home right now. Let your presence, let the presence of your Shekinah glory flood their home, flood their house, Lord God. Flood their spirits right now, Lord. I thank you that your peace that surpasses all understanding is flooding their hearts and their minds right now, that there'd be no distractions of the enemy. I, I bind the enemy. I forbid the enemy to cause distractions, to cause you to, to become sleepy, uh, fatigued suddenly. I break these assignments. I set you free to receive your deliverance today uh, from things that were imparted to you that were not of God. I thank you, Father, for doing this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So I, I received a call yesterday, and, and as I was thinking about this call, somebody was asking for prayer, and uh, they'd just been stuck in a cycle uh, for some time now. And as I began to probe, I began to ask, well, when did this begin? And the person said, well, you know, it, I, I believe it began after I visited this uh, church. And so um, as we were speaking, the Holy Spirit started giving words of knowledge, words of wisdom. And uh, we had a, a, a strong uh, confirmation that that's where, where it came from, where it started. And uh, there were hands laid on this person. So let me just, uh, let's just open with a passage here out of 1 Timothy verse chapter 5 verse 22 24 and 25 okay and let me just say this right now i'm not taking this out of context uh, you know timothy is being encouraged not to place someone in a position of authority uh, in the church that is a new believer okay they, they're not seasoned he's saying don't be so quick to lay hands on them and commission them okay but the principle here Okay, the principle here applies to what, what I'm talking about today, okay? All right, so verse 22. Do not lay hands on anyone hastily, nor share in other people's sins. Keep yourself pure. Why would, why would laying, the hand, you know, laying hands on someone or someone laying hands on you, how could that cause you to share in someone else's sin? Let's think about that. Keep yourself pure. Some men's sins are clearly evident, preceding them to judgment. But those of some men follow later. 
Likewise, the good works of some are clearly, ev clearly evident, and those that are otherwise cannot be hidden. And so <clears throat> this example I just used of uh, this person, hands were laid on them, and immediately after they left this church service, this started happening. They started having you know, these attacks from this uh, impartation they received. Okay, And so um, it says right here, some, some sins are clearly evident, and then others follow later. Something that I, if I experienced when I first started, when God started releasing me out into ministry, you know, laying hands on people at the end of a service, and I'll pray for everyone. I will stay there until the last person is prayed for. I've left places when the sun was coming up because I've prayed for every person in the house. And, and, but then I started experiencing these struggles afterwards. And what I, what I learned was things were jumping on me. Things were being imparted to me. And, and I needed to learn that after I you know, pray for people, I needed to pray and ask God to cleanse me of anything that may have been transferred to me. And, uh, and that took care of the problem. Okay. And that really started me on a journey, um, and I'm still, I'm still learning, okay? I don't know it all. I only know what he reveals, okay? But, I, I, you know, he took me on a journey with this, and it was very important for me to learn this, especially if you're out there praying for people, if you're laying hands on people, especially out in public. You don't know who they are, and you just you feel led to, you know, as Christians, we're lovey-dovey, you know? When you start praying for someone, you want to hold them, you want to lay hands on them. Sometimes, especially in this day, that's not the best uh, action to take okay just depends you have to be led by the holy spirit so what happens is you can you can actually lay hands on someone and get you what happens is you become one with them you get yoked with them in the spirit and that's where the transference starts to begin okay that's why he says don't lay hands on anyone hastily don't share in in other people's sins and keep yourself pure. So witches operate this way. See, the enemy counterfeits everything that God does. Witches speak in tongues. It's a demonic tongue. And they're releasing demonic prophecies when they do that. Uh, they also uh, lay hands. You know, they love going to, to supermarkets. And they'll touch you. to like They're leaning over you to get something off a shelf or whatever. And, or they're projecting curses on you. Maybe you don't experience any of this, that's good. But if you do experience it, you'll know how to handle it after today. Okay? If you experience something like that, you'll know how to handle it. But here's the other thing, too. You have them in the churches. You have many sorcerers. I mean, Timothy said in, uh, I think it's 2 Timothy, Paul said that you would have enchanters, you know, deceiving many and being deceived themselves. If you look up that word enchanters, it, it means basically a sorcerer, people that are, are releasing uh, enchantments from the pulpit in the church. And we're seeing that today, okay? There's a power. And when you're in that, under a covering like that, and you're receiving that, you're being affected by it. You're being affected by it. Uh, let me give you another example. Let's go to Acts chapter 8. Now, you have, I'll just say, I'll just touch on two, two different types. You have people who know they're operating in witchcraft. They are sent and planted in churches to defile people. They, they want to be, most of the time, you're going to find them on intercession teams, teams of intercessors, the prayer lines, the ministry teams, they're laying hands on people, things like that. Um, and then you have those. The other, the, the, the second type is a person who is they, they're, they're involved in church, they're on ministry teams, or, or you know, they're evangelistic and, and their, their ministry type is out on the streets, and, but they have sin in their life that they haven't repented of. They're practicing some dark stuff, you know, perversions, it could be fornication, whatever, and they're not repenting. God is on them to repent. They're not repenting. Well, guess what? They lay hands on you and you're open and you're receiving because you think they're so anointed. Guess what? That spirit's going to get on you. That's that's basically what happened to this person that, that asked for prayer that walked out of this church. And this was in another state. It was not here in Houston or Texas. So Acts chapter 8, verse 14 through 21. 
And this is about Simon the sorcerer. So we'll just, let me just read this out. There was a certain man called Simon who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great, to whom, um, to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And they heeded him because he astonished them with his sorceries for a long time. But when they believed Philip, as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself believed, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed, seeing the miracles and the signs that were done. So you, if you go on, Simon says, hey, I want this power. Let me, let me, let me pay for it. I'll pay you if you will give me this Holy Spirit so I can lay hands on people. And um, so basically he was trying to do it his way. Okay. You have some people that will take scriptures out of context. They begin to pray them and there's a power that will manifest, but it's not the power of the Holy Spirit. They'll lay hands on you and you will be affected by it. You'll be defiled by it. And that's basically what, what was happening here. Um, and here's what, here's what happens, you know, Peter says to him, your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of your wickedness and pray, God, if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven, for I see that you're poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. You don't want someone that is in that condition laying hands on you and prophesying over you. You don't want that, okay? It will affect you. You will, you will be affected by it. Okay, let's go to another passage here. This is in 2 Corinthians. I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians. Chapter 6, verse 15 and 16. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, become one flesh. Okay, so he's talking about marriage. He's talking about prostitution. He's talking about those things. But the principle here applies to the laying on of hands. Because it's a spiritual thing that takes place. There's a transference that takes place. There is this yoke, this soul tie that creates. And you become one flesh with someone. That's why you have to know who you're praying with, who's praying for you. You have to, you have to know them by the Spirit. You have to allow God to give you the discernment of who to, to um, get in agreement with for prayer. Okay, Because you may be yoking yourself up to something that is defiled. You know, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, he says, don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers, right? What has fellowship with light and darkness? They, they don't have fellowship with each other. He's saying, come out from among them. And he's speaking to people in the church, in the Corinthian church. All kinds of stuff going on there. I was doing a Bible study one time. This was many, many years ago. I would say probably in 1997, something like that. And God told me, he spoke very clearly to me. He said, I want you to have a Bible study. And I freaked out. I had no confidence whatsoever to speak in front of two people at one time. I freaked out. And God would not leave me alone. He kept saying, I want you to have a Bible study. I want you to have a Bible study. And, and finally, I, I, I yielded and I said, okay. And I psyched myself out. I said, I'm going to do this. And, and he, you know, he said, just make 10 invites and hand them out to 10 people. Whoever comes, comes. And you share what I'm going to put on your heart to share. I was so paranoid that these 10 people that came to my Bible study were my friends that I knew for many years, and I still couldn't bring myself to speak in front of them. That's where God got me, and he began to work with me, okay? That's how, how, how um, insecure I was, okay? As time went on, these Bible studies started to grow, and I was becoming a little more confident in Christ, in his word, in his power. I began to get it. And this lady came who was someone who, you know, I, I've seen in church many times and she was in positions and, of, you know, authority in church and things like that. And she showed up at my meeting and she came up and she wanted to pray for me. And I said, sure. And when she laid, the minute she laid hands on me, I felt something like electricity shoot through my body. 
all the way down to my feet, all the way back up, up my head. And I literally felt like something was moving through my body. And it was, a, it was a very weird. I just didn't feel right with it. But here, my mind was saying, this is a, a mighty woman of God. I don't know what's going on here. Long story short, I struggled. After that, I struggled with lust. I struggled with pornography. All of a sudden, it just came out of nowhere, and this thing had me. And I talked to somebody, uh, somebody in a different ministry, and I was telling them what happened, and they prayed for me, and they broke that thing, and that spirit left me immediately, and I got set free from it. And that was my first experience with the laying on of hands. And I've told you many times, when God you know, gives me a message to share, he usually has me walk, walk it out first so that I at least have an idea of what I'm talking about because I've experienced it myself. It is very real, very real. You know, you can have somebody who's, who prays for you, who is poverty-minded. They, they pray beautiful, but they're poverty-minded. Guess what? That spirit will get on you. That's a spirit. It'll get on you, okay? And, and you know, don't limit it just to some addiction or some unclean defiling thing anything that is not of God you become one with someone that thing will get on you but it's easy to get set free from it because you're going to get set free from it today hallelujah all right last passage that I want to take you to this is in Proverbs you know kind of in the same vein of um, you know when, you, when you're married, you become one. And uh, so you don't want to join yourself to a harlot. Right? You want to join yourself. You want to be equally yoked with someone that is on the path that you're on. You know, I, have, I have a few friends you know, um, that I'm yoked with. And they pray for me, and they know how to pray for me. And I know how to pray for them. And if I don't, if we don't, the Holy Spirit will teach us how to pray for each other. And you, you need that in your life. Don't be a lone ranger. Okay, verse 15. Remember, let me just say this. Remember Jesus said, come to me, all you who thirst, and I'll give you living waters, right? Rivers of living water will flow out of your belly. Okay, keep that in mind. This is verse 15, Proverbs 5. Drink water from your own cistern and running water from your own well. Should your fountains be dispersed abroad, streams of water in the streets? Let them, be only, let them be only your own and not for strangers with you. So you see that? Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth. Okay? Let your fountains be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth. Why should you, my son, be enraptured by an immoral woman and be embraced in the arms of a seductress. And it, the roles can be reversed. It could be a man, okay? But God is saying, drink water from your own. Don't be so quick to mix, for mixture. Don't get yourself involved with somebody that is uh, living a double life. You know, here recently, God, God really delivered me from a relationship. I, I, my intentions were to, to help someone I, I put it all out there for this person. I really wanted to see this person succeed and overcome. And it turned out that this person was living a double life. And, you know, you might say, well, you're supposed to be a prophet. How come you didn't see that, right? Well, because I don't operate like a psychic. I'm, you know, I'm not always looking in people's, I don't even want to see, okay? It's the Lord who shows me things. But my heart, you know, I, my heart was in the right place. And the Lord actually brought it all out into the open. And he revealed what was really going on and was able to put space between me and this person. Now, that's not to say that I'm not praying for this person and that this person's, you know, he's going to get free. He is going to get free. This person will be delivered and will walk in what God has for them. Unfortunately, I can't be a part of it. Not right now. And so God will deliver you. He'll save you. He will. He'll protect you. But you have to, you, you have to keep what God has given you pure. Let it be pure. Let it be undefiled. Let the reservoir, the anointing, and the holiness that God is working in you, let it build up like a reservoir until it's overflowing out of you. But you have to keep yourself pure, even things you watch, even things you're listening to. But specifically, we're talking about the laying on of hands. So God can set you free. 
if, if you've been struggling with something, if you've been struggling with pornography, if you've been struggling with addiction, if you've been struggling with depression, whatever it is, and you never struggled with it before, it just suddenly came out of nowhere. It's very possible someone laid hands on you. It's very possible that, especially if you go to a lot of churches and a lot of meetings and, you know, you want a prophecy, you want a prophecy, you want impartation, start being prayerful about that. Start asking the Lord, should you go up for prayer? If he tells you no, don't do it. You're not going to miss out on anything. You're going to be actually very glad that you listened and that you obeyed what the Lord told you. Amen? So let's just go ahead and uh, let's, just, let's just lift them up right now, and then I'll pray for you. Father, we just thank you, Lord. God, we give you all glory and honor and praise. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy, Abba, of all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. Lord, you're mighty in power, Lord. You're mighty to save, Lord God. Lord, I thank you, Father God, that you're the great deliverer, that you are our counselor, you are a provider, you are our protector, Abba. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that you have your eye on the sparrow, my brother and my sister watching this episode right now. Lord, I thank you that there is no impartation of the enemy that is too great for your name, your blood, and your anointing to set them free from, Lord God. God, I thank you, Father God, that you're opening up their hearts right now. Lord, I thank you, Father God, that you're bringing change into their life today. Lord, we just worship you and praise you, Abba. You're the Alpha and the Omega. You're so worthy. You're the first and the last. You're the beginning and the end, Abba. Lord, you, you, you've made us to be wisdom, Lord. You are wisdom. You are redemption. Lord, thank you for coming to die on the cross for us, Lord. Lord, we just release blessing and praises and honor to you. For you alone are worthy to be praised, Abba. You alone are worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. We give you glory. We adore you. We adore you. We bless you. Oh, Lord, we bless you. We bless you, Lord. Let your power fall in this place. Let your power fall in their homes right now. Let your anointing be poured out upon them like warm honey over their heads. Lord, to break every yoke, to break every cord that the enemy is using to keep them bound. Lord, we thank you that your presence is with us. Lord, we thank you that you're free to move among us right now, that there is nothing between you and my brother and sister and myself as we pray, as I pray for them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So I feel the presence of the Lord right now. Oh, man, I feel your presence. Abba. Lord, I thank you that they're feeling your presence as well, your tenderness towards them, your gentleness towards them, Lord God. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, that your name will set them free. In Jesus' name, you will set them free. Father, I bless my brother and my sister. I break and cancel every ungodly impartation that has been given to you by the laying on of hands. Every demonically inspired prophecy that was spoken over you, that has kept you bound, that has kept you soul caged, I break the power of those prophecies. I deprogram you from those prophecies in Jesus' mighty name. I set you free from them. I set you free from the influence of them. I set you free from the fruit that it's produced in your life. And I curse the root, the stem, and the fruit of that work of these false prophecies. I command it to die at the very root. I forbid it to produce any more fruit in your life. I forbid it to influence you. I forbid it to influence your relationships or anything concerning you. I release you from these things. And I command the spirits that were imparted to you to go from you now in Jesus' name. All addiction. Lord, I thank you that your power is available right now to deliver them of addiction, to deliver them of spirit marriages, to deliver them, Lord God, of ungodly soul ties to deliver them and to break them right now, Abba. I thank you that that's what you're doing, Lord. I thank you that the angels are being released, Lord, to bind up the enemy, to bind up the devils and the demons in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I thank you right now, Lord, that all the defilement that has come into the mind, all the defilement that has come into the heart and the soul of my brother and my sister by the laying on of hands, Lord, I thank you right now that the Holy Spirit begins to wash and cleanse them with your holiness and your purity by the power of your anointing. Lord, I thank you that that anointing breaks that yoke right now. That anointing removes every false burden, every false obligation, every false responsibility, every false weight that you did not place upon them that came upon them through the laying on of hands. I break that off of them right now. I break the chains that try to bind you. I break the yokes that try to keep you from moving forward in what God's called you to do. I break the shackles off of you in Jesus' mighty name. And I release you to become the God, the, the man or woman of God that God has called you to be. I 
release you to begin to walk in the fullness of what God has for you. I release you from the defilement. I release you from every unclean spirit. I release you from the tormenting spirits and every hindering and familiar spirit. I break their hold off of you in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit will come upon my brother and my sister. I thank you that your Holy Spirit will fill them fresh and new, broaden the tents of their heart, Cause your unconditional love to overflow out of them. And Lord, I pray that you would give them the gift of discernment. That discernment in them, Lord, would be at a level that it's never been before. Lord, that they would discern and know, Lord, when they are being uh, enticed to enter into some type of relationship that they would end up being defiled by. Lord, give them discernment to know when to allow people to lay hands on them, when to allow someone to prophesy over them, Lord God. And I release your word right now, Lord God, that everything they lay their hands on, they will begin to prosper. Everything that you attempt, you're going to begin to succeed. That your gift goes before you and it makes room for you. That you excel in the work that God's called you to do. You will excel and it will cause you to stand before decision makers, not before unknown men. I thank you, Father God, that even though my brother, my sister has been throwing the dice, it seems like it's been like, man, maybe this time I'll win. Lord, I thank you that from this day forward, you're determining the outcome of every throw of the dice in their life. Lord, I thank you that they're playing with loaded dice and it's loaded in their favor, Father. I thank you for doing these things, Lord. You alone are worthy. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that you deliver them today. It's by the power that's in your name that you deliver them today. It's by the power of your blood. It's by the power of your anointing. It's by the power of your Holy Spirit. It's by the power of your word spoken that they are delivered today. Lord, I thank you that, that you've availed much in their life today, Lord God. God, I thank you, Father God, that the peace of God which surpasses all understanding is flooding their mind right now. Lord, and I thank you for no more torment between the ears. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Brother, sister, I know God set you free. I know that he set you free, and I know that he has imparted divine wisdom in you going forward when to allow people to lay hands on you. It's, it's, it's biblical, but you need to know when to allow it. It's biblical. I am not discounting that in any way. I love that when God sets it up, but you need to know when to do it, when to allow it, when to receive it, because then you can begin to walk in that which God has poured into you through someone else that he has sent across your path. Amen. Okay, well, I'm Samuel. My prayer for you today is that this word will take root in your heart, that the angels will war on behalf of it to bring it to pass for you in this day and hour. In Jesus' mighty name. Until next time, I'm Samuel. This is Smashing Pillars. Thank you for joining me.